Chapter 1. Transfer. Sana had finished her sandwich and was scrolling through the news. The cafeteria around her was a scene of chaos, but that was nothing unusual, and she'd been tuning out the noise for the better part of twenty minutes now. Anything good? asked Annalisa, Sana's best friend, around a mouthful of peanut butter and bread. Sana loved the girl, but her table manners were atrocious. Another supervillain fight. The photo for this one was impressive. It depicted a man surrounded by black specks hovering in midair, his face a blur that looked like someone had dripped water on the picture and smeared it. He was wearing a gold circlet and was dressed in all black. Across from him, caught in mid-roar, was the head of a creature that looked like a Komodo dragon with teeth. The head was as big as the human it was fighting. That's not news. It happens twice a week. Which one's this time? Lisa polished off her sandwich and dropped an apple in front of Sana, who passed her a container of raisins. Lord Static and a Kaiju, courtesy of Doctors Como and Prazinus. Apparently, Lord Static wanted to rob the nearby bank at the same time the crazies with the PhDs let their beast out for a test run. Yeesh. Talk about bad luck. He get the cash? Uh, she scrolled through the article. Nope. Took a couple too many hits and decided to call the whole thing off after he stabbed the lizard in the heart with one of his nanotech constructs. Can't win them all, I guess. Anna sighed dramatically. Things would be so much better if Calabria had a hero. This was the beginning of the script of a well-tried conversation. Sana placed her phone on the table and said, You know full well that's not how it works. Why not? We have a couple hundred thousand people here. Surely at least one of them has the guts and skills to step up. Everyone who can fight Calabria's supervillains is a supervillain already. You act like a normal person or a rookie super handled phase magic giant bioengineered monsters and whatever else the established superhumans could throw at them. She ticked her fingers off as she spoke, then shook her head. A homegrown's not happening. We could get a breakaway. Former sidekicks don't exactly go to smaller cities like ours unless they're steeped in corruption. We may have a supervillain problem, but they keep each other in check enough that anybody looking in wouldn't bother to fix things. Why must you bring logic into this? Because I delight in your suffering. She gave her a smile. Want me to take your trash up? Yes, please. The bell rang, and Sana plastered herself to Annalisa's side. The crowds parted much more willingly for Lisa's taller, stronger frame compared to Sana's slight build. She had to duck, weave, slide, and dodge elbows whenever her friend wasn't there. Fortunately, her current presence made it so Sana could continue checking the news. Dang, she muttered as she pulled up the traffic report. Looks like I gotta take a detour home. Dr. K and Dr. P's latest creation really did a number on the streets when it died. She held the phone out to Annalisa, who whistled. <whistles> Look at all that property damage. I'm kind of impressed. You live in the other direction. I'm the one who has to avoid it. Sana took her phone back and stuffed it into her pocket. But yes, the insurance companies are bawling and the rates are on the rise. Don't be so negative. Annalisa elbowed Sana cheerfully and stepped aside to let her into the English classroom. It's not like it's any different from the last four times this has happened. Sucks that there's a bank and a park between your house and the school, but that's life. It may not be different, but it's still annoying. Sana dropped her bag and slumped into her seat. Annalisa was far more graceful about the affair. She placed a hand on Sana's back and gave it a consoling pat. English was the last class of the day. They were doing poetry. Sana scribbled a haiku in the corner of her notebook during a lull in the lecture. In the spirit of the thing, 
and in preparation for whatever presentation the teacher was bound to spring at them later. I would not have known how glass snaps like sugar panes if not for mother. She slid it over to Lisa with a little note. Think I could get away with it if Teach makes us write something? Come up with a couple others, link them thematically, see if she catches on. Good thought. She didn't have a chance to think of any others in class. The dissection of the red wheelbarrow took way too long for a 16-word poem, no matter how famous it was. Her brain felt numb by the end. She walked with Anna to her locker, then said goodbye and headed to her own. The inside was a disaster zone, crammed with binders and notebooks and tiny sun catchers and fused glass touchstones. Her bike jacket and rolled up messenger bag filled most of the remaining open space. The situation didn't improve much even after Sana grabbed her bag and coat and exchanged the binder she needed. At least the thing's still shut and locked. For now. Navigating out of the crowd was easy enough, and Sana slipped into her preferred detour route without trouble. The way was familiar and relatively safe despite its nature. Unlike most other cities, the braver subset of Calabrian kids and teens could pass through the back alleys unbothered. Having a local supervillain populace that didn't take kindly to crimes inflicted on underage individuals really cut down on the rates of those crimes, even without a hero. Who'd have thunk? A little over halfway home, a thought struck Sana. Had she forgotten her wallet in her locker? Probably not, and it wouldn't be a big deal if she had, but she needed to check. She kept walking, but took her bag off and started to rifle through it. A huge crash and a scream resounded from a dead-end alley branching off from Sana's own. She jumped in fright, almost losing her grip on her bag, and ran forward to see what was going on. She froze at the junction. Deeper in the alley, something huge, muscular, Black and furry had a man's leg in its mouth. It was shaking him like a rag doll. Even as she watched, the monster threw him towards her. He hit the ground with a sickening wet crack. It was Lord Static. Sana watched the monster prowl towards the villain. It had six glowing red eyes, a red inverted triangle on its forehead, too many legs, and a furless, whip-like tail like a rat's. It prowled towards its prey, silent as a shadow. Light spilled from gashes in its flesh, throwing its features into strange and frightening relief. She backed up, too afraid to breathe, when her foot bumped into an empty can. The monster's head snapped up, and all of its eyes locked on her. Lord Static took the chance and sent a spike through the monster's chest. It let out a horrible scream and swatted him into the wall. The spike dissolved, leaving a hole clean through the creature. Light poured from the wound. The monster turned back to Sana, and why wasn't it dead yet? It lunged. She dropped her bag, dove forward, and tucked into a shoulder roll. It was enough for the creature to fly clean over her. Momentum brought her back to her feet in time for the thing's tail to crack across her forehead, despite the arm she put up in a hasty block. A cut opened where the tail struck. She staggered sideways and dropped to one knee a split second before Claw sliced the air where her head had been. Her tumble had brought her to within a yard of Lord Static. The supervillain was fumbling with one of the pouches on his belt. The suicidal urge to yell at him to do something was strong, but Sana had to roll out of the way of the beast's teeth before she could follow through. She settled on shouting, Please tell me there's a plan! He grunted, and the beast's head snapped back. It gave Sana a fantastic shot at the triangle on its forehead. She threw a punch. It connected, and the monster's whole body rippled. It roared in agony, and Sana took the opportunity to scramble backwards. What did you do? Lord Static demanded. His voice buzzed. Punch the triangle on its head, she replied as a claw ripped her shirt and left a deep scratch in an attempt to disembowel her. Ow! 
the only thing keeping her alive was the fact that the creature had to split its attention between Lord Static and herself. As soon as it inflicted the blow on her, it whipped its tail at Lord Static. That resulted in a clang and a screech from the monster. It gave Sana enough time to get out of range. She could see Lord Static now, though he was still slumped against the wall. They made eye contact for a split second. Could you do it again? Do you want to make it matter? A pure black sword materialized in front of her. Pierce it, Lord Static ordered. She grabbed the hilt in both hands and braced it just in time for a claw to crash against the blade. Luck was the only thing that kept the sword in her hands. She hopped backwards and swayed left to avoid a bite. She swung the blade down, but missed, and ended up slicing clean through the monster's muzzle. It screamed and flailed, down half a snout. Oh, that's disturbing, Sana thought. At least there wasn't gore, just more of that light. She couldn't get in a good shot or run away with it throwing itself into the walls, so she inched back away from the downed supervillain and thrashing creature until her back hit a dumpster pressed against the alley wall. Better to be as far away as possible from the supervillain with all the firepower. Maybe if she got lucky, the lost face chunk would kill the monster. She was not lucky. It took a few seconds, but the creature reoriented itself and lunged straight for her. There was nowhere to go except... Give me a boost, she shouted as she leapt up. Lord Static did as she asked, and the extra platform propelled her clumsily onto the dumpster lid. It was a terrible perch that only got worse when the monster ran into the front of the bin, but that worked out all right, since the blade was already headed for the triangle. The destabilization just meant more of Sana's body weight went into the blow than intended. It struck true, and the monster let out one final shriek and shattered like a Prince Rupert's drop. Sana overbalanced and tumbled head over heels for the second time that day. Luckily for her, the sword dissolved before she could impale herself on it, and she passed through the shards of light unharmed to land on something that felt like a beanbag. She groaned as she sat up. Her whole body hurt, with the worst of it radiating from her stomach and arms. It wasn't debilitating, but she'd need an aspirin when she got home. The beanbag lowered her gently to the ground and left her leaning against the dumpster. Doing so put her at a diagonal from Lord Static, on his level. She winced and pushed herself to her feet. Getting out before the supervillain re-lost his senses and went for her seemed like a fantastic idea right about now. Not sticking around to bask in your glory, demon slayer. Think of the devil, she grimaced. That was not a name she'd be spreading around any time soon. Walking was a minor challenge. The skin around her stomach pulled at the edges of the forming scab, and her hands burned when she used them to brace herself on the dumpster and walls. Despite that, she managed. The effort was so great she didn't notice the cloud of nanobots winding around her ankle. Her bag was right where she'd dropped it. She threw it over her shoulder and glanced behind her. Lord Static still hadn't moved. Why? He should have at least gotten up. It took a moment for her to register the pool of blood he was sitting in. The instinct to help overrode the instinct to run away, and she went over to him the nanobot chain vanishing as she did so. Her knees hit the concrete with a bruising impact, and she tore off her bike jacket. It wasn't great, but it would keep her hands away from the open wound. She bunched it up and pressed it to the leg as hard as she could. The black fabric went shiny with blood almost immediately. Lord Static laughed, a raspy, wet sound. Figures you'd be a do-gooder, he said. She leaned back, startled and more than a little afraid, when his hands shot out and locked around her wrists. They were like iron shackles. She clawed at his wound through the makeshift bandage, but he was immovable. Don't bother, kid, Lord Static rasped. I shot myself up with enough chemicals to fly when that thing was distracted. No way I'm letting you run off to let me bleed out, not for another minute. 
She opened her mouth to scream, but a cloud of nanobots covered her mouth and solidified into a band around her head. When she tried to push it off by wiggling her jaw, it only flexed. You done? Lord Static asked. He didn't wait for an answer. Look, I'm dying. No way around it. The only thing keeping me lucid is Dr. Prazenus's wonder drug cocktail shot, and that's killing me as fast as the blood loss. You're gonna be the last person I ever see. What the hell did that matter? He kept monologuing, not that Sana could have contributed anything. Unfortunately for everyone, I thought the last person I'd see would be my trainee. He should have offed me in about a decade. My bot's inheritance program was designed with that scenario in mind. She furrowed her brow and blinked at him in an attempt to convey her confusion. He tilted his head towards his leg. She followed his line of sight and let out a muffled scream at the cloud of nanobots that were creeping up her arms. They were almost to her elbows. That's about what I expected. Lord Static sighed. Calm down. They're not going to hurt you if you listen to me. I'm a supervillain, but I'm not enough of an asshole to screw over a kid on purpose. <laughs> Language. And I just told you this wasn't the plan. The cloud of nanobots around him was melting down his neck and up his limbs. It had climbed all the way up Sana's chest and covered most of her torso by this point. None of them were touching her directly, but it was like knowing someone's finger was hovering less than an inch above her skin. She shuddered. Lord Static rolled his eyes. I don't like it any more than you, but we're gonna have to deal with it for the rest of our lives. And if you want yours to last longer than a year or two, you have to pay attention right now. Understand? The cloud had crept up her neck and was all the way off his legs. He still had her wrists in his grip and was forcing her to maintain pressure on his wound. Blood had seeped all the way through the jacket and was staining her hands. She nodded. What other choice did she have? Lord Static let go of her. She didn't move. Once he was certain she wouldn't bail, he reached up, grimacing all the way, and detached something from the nape of his neck. Hurts like a kid... Consider yourself lucky you're young enough for me to feel bad for you. His fiddling bore fruit as, with a soft click, he pulled something that looked like a choker out from under the collar of his suit. Bag. His voice had lost the static equality that had been so inhuman. He kind of sounded like Sana's dad now. Without a sound, she opened her messenger bag, then went back to the leg injury. Her hands left blood stains on the clip and the flap. Lord Static dropped the choker into the bag, then fumbled for his belt. While he fiddled, he spoke. I was going to give this stuff to my trainee, but it's going to wind up in police custody and then get destroyed. So you get it instead. Congrats. Sh uh, shoot. Okay. Okay. What does a completely ignorant kid need to know about my nanobots? He was still fumbling with the belt. Despite the drugs keeping him alert, it was obvious that the blood loss was getting to him. Thing one, find my safe houses if you want to live. You'll be the only one with access, the bots will get you in. Thing two, the bots are linked to your brain. Your thoughts and emotions will control them, so maybe take up meditation. Aha! After an agonizing wait, the belt went the way of the necklace. With trembling hands, he reached for his crown. Thing three, most of the code is programmed to shut down during the ownership transfer. It'll open up again as you get better at controlling what you have. He removed the crown from his head and placed it on her own. His face appeared out of blurry haze, obscuring it. He looked so normal, brown hair and brown puppy dog eyes and a wan face. Thing four, the next few hours are going to really, really suck. Sorry. He brushed the back of his hand over her mouth, and the band dissolved. Thing five, he wheezed. 
the drugs losing the fight, and only a few straggler bots remaining in small spherical clouds around her hands. If you're gonna use the bots in a way that'll make me do backflips in my grave, you can't wind up in the ground doing so. I've got enough to answer for. He smiled and lifted his hand one last time to press a finger to her forehead. Tag, you're it. He died with his eyes open.